And here it is, my friends, the eagerly anticipated updated guide to decimating all the bots in Helldivers 2 after the recent patch that has completely shaken up the meta and drastically changed our tactics. If you've seen part one where I covered the bugs, you'll already know the format, but here's a super quick introduction if you're fresh to the series. Following on from my recent video where I gave you an in-depth breakdown and testing of the recent patch, I have performed further tests to come up with brand new strategies to help us spread managed democracy and rid the galaxy of aliens for freedom. So let's get straight into the first enemy type and take a look at the different raider variations. There are actually 18 different variations of the automatons, but I've broken them down into 11 different categories because some of them are quite similar. There are no less than seven different types of what I would call little guys. The first three variations are the basic raider, the MG raider, and the rocket raider. And as you've probably already guessed, the MG raider carries a machine gun and the rocket raider carries a rocket launcher. Just like the scavengers of the Terminids, all of these will pretty much go down in one or two shots of any weapon. However, they are not to be trifled with, especially the Rocket Raiders, because they can pack a punch and even one-shot you. So it is very much advised to use cover at all times where possible when fighting the bots, and if you can, even bring a personal or a full-size shield generator for the whole team, because in many situations, you will be bombarded with bullets and rockets from all over the place almost constantly. Now that we've covered the first three types of raider, the fourth and final type is the assault raider. And the reason I've called out this variation specifically is because they have one very big strength that the other three don't have that you need to look out for, and this is their jump pack. Not only will their jump pack allow them to close distances very quickly, it also can and will explode when they die, and it will one-shot you if you're stood right next to them. So be very careful of Assault Raiders. Always try to dive away before delivering that finishing blow because they can be very scary. Another new important piece of information you should know about before we move on to the next enemies is the fact that the armor system now works correctly and has had an overhaul. Therefore, I now strongly recommend using medium or even heavy armor for taking out the bots. Unlike the bugs where running around and keeping your distance is a really great, really viable strategy, because 99% of bots are ranged, your best bet is cover and tankiness. And especially due to the nerf of the personal shield generator, rocking heavy armor so you can soak up more bullets is going to be far more effective than wearing light armor and trying to run away from the flurry of rockets and bullets that will be coming at you 24-7. At this point, I also just quickly wanted to address the new Patriot exosuit. There's a couple of main reasons that I haven't included that in this guide. Firstly, and arguably most importantly, is this is a one-use per mission stratagem. Once it's gone, it's gone. So if I was to tell you the best way to take out a particular robot or the best strategy for this particular scenario is using the exosuit, well, that means that you can literally only do that once per mission, and then if it gets blown up or once it runs out of ammo, you're screwed. And also, I would like these guides to continue being as accessible as possible to all. And considering this costs 20,000 requisition and you can't unlock it until level 25, people who don't have as much time on their hands could be playing for a few weeks before they unlock this. So ideally, I want to stick to things that are much more accessible and open to everyone. With that out of the way, let's move on to the next section. The next two little guys are the Marauders and the Troopers. Marauders are just as weak as Raiders and they don't really do all that much more either. Never underestimate any of the bots, but as long as you have a gun in your hand and you shoot first, the Marauders also won't pose any more of a threat to you than the Raiders. As for the Troopers, you rarely ever see these guys on foot. You occasionally will. I don't have any footage of them because it is that rare. Usually you find them operating Scout Striders, which we will talk about in just a second. The seventh and final little guy is the Brawler. Brawlers melt just as quickly as all the other little guys, but they can run at you with their dual swords and deal quite a bit of damage if allowed to get up in your face. So just like with the Assault Raiders, try and keep your distance between them and take them down as quickly as possible so you can focus on the bigger threats in the battlefield. 
Next up, let's talk about the medium threats on the battlefield, starting with the Scout Strider. This mech will be manned by a trooper, and though they can look pretty intimidating at first, especially when faced with a few of them, they have one huge weakness, and that is that the back of this mech is completely open, and you can easily just shoot the trooper on the back, completely disabling and effectively destroying the vehicle, because once you've destroyed the operator, no other bots will try to run over and use it. Alternatively, and this advice is very crucial if playing solo, there is a few ways to fight them even from the front. If you have even a tiny bit of elevation, you should be able to shoot their head. If you've seen the previous video, you'll know that I've been told previously that you can also snipe scout striders through the little eye hole on the front of the strider. However, after lots and lots of testing, I can confirm with 99% certainty that this is not the case. Therefore, my favorite method to deal with these guys, especially after the nerfs and buffs from the previous patch, is the good old grenade launcher. It was my go-to support weapon before I found out about the god-tier power of the railgun, and now that that's been nerfed, the grenade launcher shines through even better than ever. You can hit the striders from anywhere with the grenade launcher, and just the AoE splash damage alone will almost always kill them in one hit. Another few added bonuses of having one or two members of your team bringing the grenade launcher with you are the facts that you can clear hordes of smaller threats with just one magazine, and they're pretty damn effective at clearing out factories from range too. So it's a win-win-win. Failing any kind of high armor piercing or AoE damage though, did you know that the hip joint of their legs can always be blown apart as well, and that in turn will kill them? This only has medium armor, and therefore can be taken out with only medium armor piercing weapons, such as the first support weapon that you will have access to, the Stalwart. But the easiest and my favorite way is just blast them with any kind of AoE explosive. Just one or two shots from a grenade launcher will kill them due to the splash damage that it deals. And by using this method, you can wipe out a whole squad of bots, not just the Scout Strider. By aiming a few grenades at it, you will blow up the Scout Strider and all of the little guys around it at the same time. This is definitely the easiest method for dealing with the swathes of little bots you will have to fight in every single one of the Automaton missions. And doing this saves all of your big beefy stratagems for the biggest enemies, which we will talk about in just a minute. The next medium threat enemy is the Berserker. These guys behave exactly like brawlers. They are big souped up bots with chainsaws for hands, and they will just continually charge at you until they are dead. If you do get ganked by them, they can be very scary. But just know that their arms are their weak points, and if you blow both of their arms off, then they're pretty useless and won't be able to do all that much, allowing you all the time in the world to finish them off. And finally, for the medium enemies, we have Devastators. These come in three different forms. The Standard Devastators, the Heavy Devastator, and the Rocket Devastator. The Standard Devastators are nearly as brittle as the Berserkers, taking full damage from most damage types, though they do resist certain very low penetration weapons. Therefore, I would suggest trying to aim for their weak spot, their eyes, the red dot right in the middle of their face. Shooting at this with pretty much any weapon will take them down very quickly. You don't want to waste any of your big cooldowns, ideally, such as your Eagle Strikes and your Orbital Strikes, and even your more powerful support weapons you ideally want to save for bigger threats. Because the bots have far more intimidating threats than the Devastators, and you definitely want to save your big stuff for them. Just try and aim for their head and their eyes, and they will go down far quicker than you expect them to. However, as for the Heavy Devastator, they have a giant ballistic shield in front of them, and they're resistant to quite a few forms of damage. Again, I just blast them with three or four grenade launcher shots. However, any decent armor-piercing weapon will take these guys down pretty damn quick. The Laser Cannon is my personal favorite. Since the buff, the Laser Cannon is actually insanely good against so many bots. It has replaced the Railgun in almost every situation because its range, its damage, its control and accuracy are now absolutely incredible. Combine this with the fact that if you manage your heat well, it will never run out of ammo. And you've got something that's very effective against all but the heaviest of armor. And talking of the laser cannon, this is also my weapon of choice for the next enemy that we're looking at, the Rocket Devastator. These guys are painful. They can shoot you from a flipping mile away with pretty good accuracy, 
and without any kind of armor or shields, just one of their rockets will end your existence. In my opinion, these are definitely the scariest enemies to deal with until you get to the really big high threats. So every time you see one of their rocket barrages whiz past you, find out immediately exactly where their rockets came from, track down the source and take them out immediately. These are such a high priority. They can very, very quickly ruin a mission. They have the same weak points as the other Devastators, so focus on their face and their arms, or even shoot off the rocket pods to nullify their only scary attack. This will give you the chance to finish them off without them causing too much more destruction. Now that you know how to handle all of the little and the medium threats, let me talk you through the two types of special bots before we take a look at the big guys. The first special type of bot is the Commissar. These guys have a small rapid-fire firearm in one hand and their sword in the other. And though they look pretty much identical and are just as weak as most of the small threats, what makes these guys special and a high-priority target is they can shoot a flare gun which will pull down a bot drop. This works very similarly to bug breaches for the Terminid and it will call down a new wave of enemies. Therefore, whenever you notice a Commissar, you want to take them out immediately to stop them bot drops from happening. And just a quick side note before we move on to the next enemy, a few people in the comments section of my previous video told me that other bots also have the capability to call in bot drops with their flares, but from my own testing, I haven't seen this happen. Hold on Dom, hold up, future Dom here. Whilst I was getting some extra footage for this video post-production, I witnessed this clip of not one, but two rocket raiders both trying to call in bot drops. I do stop them both, but as you can see here, rocket raiders can also call in drops. So I'm assuming from this that that means all of the smaller bots, raiders, marauders, brawlers, etc. all have the ability to shoot out flares and call in a new wave of enemies. So, in any fight, keep an eye out for that red beam and take them out before they can call in a dropship if possible. But regardless, once you see a flare set off, you will then encounter the second type of special enemy, the dropship. The only way really to deal with a dropship is to have a very powerful weapon ready, and if you are quick enough and in the right place at the right time, you can blow up the dropship before it drops the enemies. However, don't try to make this happen, it's very, very, very unlikely. Failing that, you can potentially do what you see here and use something like the grenade launcher to blow up all the enemies whilst they're still in the dropship, completely nullifying that attack wave. From testing, bots are actually weaker whilst they're still in the dropship, hence why using this method kills them so quickly. So shoot enemies out of dropships where possible for maximum efficiency. Now let's finally get onto the big threats and how to deal with them. The automatons actually have five big threats, but we will look at the first two variations of the Hulk together. That is the Hulk Bruiser and Obliterator. Starting with the least scary of the three Hulks is the Hulk Bruiser. This uses two very powerful assault rifles and can still easily mow down an ill-prepared party. The weak point of all three variations of Hulk is the same, and I'll show you exactly what that is in the next clip. Whilst we're looking at these two, as you can see here, their arms can be blown off, and unless you have a way to deal with one of them instantly, such as the orbital rail cannon, this is definitely the advised strategy. If you can't get behind them to tackle that weak point, shoot their arms off, and you will nullify their offensive capabilities. Now, once you've dealt with a Hulk Bruiser, you may also encounter the Hulk Obliterator. This variation has rocket pods, and it is a super-powered, very, very tanky rocket devastator on steroids. Personally, I feel this is the most terrifying Hulk variation, and if possible, always use something like the orbital laser, the rail cannon, or the spear weapon to take it down as quick as possible, do not allow it time to reposition and fire on you, because you most likely will die. Now, before we move on to the final variation of the Hulk, as I said, the weak spot is on the back. So we can see here from the back of this obliterator, you have the heat ventilation shafts. They are vulnerable to almost all forms of damage, and if you have someone distracting it from the front, you can just keep pummeling it in the back until it eventually blows up. However, as mentioned, the best thing to do is just call down a rail cannon and one-shot it. 
One additional tactic you should also be aware of, as with the Devastators, the glowing red eye in the center of its face is a very weak point. Pre-patch, as you've seen in some of these clips, a well-placed railgun shot would one-shot them. Now, I believe this now only works if you set the railgun to unsafe mode and start to overcharge it first, or alternatively, you can use something like the recoilless rifle or the spear to guarantee that one shot. But nonetheless, the red eye is a very weak spot, and if you can snipe that, all three variations of the Hulk will die very quickly. And now the third and final variation of the Hulk is the Hulk Scorcher. This is a melee variant with a devastatingly powerful flamethrower that is far more ranged than you would expect. At least with the Obliterator and the Bruiser, you can hide round corners. This thing will just track you down and will not stop hounding you until you or it is dead. So if you're on a mission where you know there are hulks, perhaps save your biggest, most powerful options for the Scorcher. Because if you don't have a way to take this thing down quickly, it can and will drive you out of any defensive position you have. And now for the final automaton, we have got the Annihilator and Shredder tanks. My god, was it hard to get usable footage of these tanks. They really live up to their name, and if you're trying to get up close and personal with them, recording them rather than killing them, they are going to annihilate and shred you to pieces very quickly. Again, like with the Hulks, they do have a weak spot on the back of the turret. They do have that heat ventilation unit that you can target, and explosives such as impact grenades are particularly effective at dealing damage to the turret. However, it does rotate pretty fast, so it's hard to get in more than a few hits before it rotates and starts blasting you to bits again. Therefore, just like with the Bile Titan in the last video, a great option is just to throw your biggest and best stratagems at them. Rail cannons will one-shot them, and orbital lasers will kill them surprisingly fast as well, usually taking out multiple tanks before they finish firing. And then you'll no longer have to worry about these terrors of the battlefield. And with that, we have now looked at all 30-plus enemy types currently in Helldivers 2, along with exactly how to tackle them. Before I finish, do you have anything that I missed? Do you have any even better ways to deal with a few of these enemies that I haven't called out? Let us all know in the comments because it would be great to learn together. And with that, please consider subscribing and giving the video a like if you've enjoyed it. And all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.